produce a cost of goods sold, which would then lead you to, well, a quickie on selling and administrative expenses. They need to be budgeted too. We won't get into it here, but you need to decide how much is appropriate for selling and administrative. You need to be careful as a company. If your other budgets aren't working out, sometimes you use this as a fudge account. But it's important in its own right, and you need to make sure that you budget your selling and administrative expenses appropriately. You certainly wouldn't want to cut down on your customer service um, because your other budgets aren't right. The next few slides will just really show you some of the things you can build from your detailed budgets. You can build a sense of your cash flows, your cash activity. You know how much you're going to sell. It says here that 70% of your sales are cash and bank credit cards. For a given company, a bank credit card is cash. Right? The company is not taking on the risk of default. The credit card company takes on that risk. So cash and bank credit cards are 70% of your sales here. And credit sales, meaning you're providing credit to your customers directly, are 30%. And you're taking on the risk that they never pay you in that case. So. This matches up with what we expect our gross sales were going to be. For April, 600,000, that's the number to look at. Now, now we'll separate out cash and bank credit. Cash is 60% of your cash and bank credit, which is 70% of your total sales. So now you have 42%, 60 times 70%, 42%. You're going to get all of that because the day you sold it is the day you got the money. Your bank credit sales, you're only going to get 97% in this example because the bank is taking its 3% to manage its own risk and its own costs. So you get 97% of 40% of your cash sales. And then your account receivables. The older an account receivable is, the less likely it is that you'll ever see that money. And so what you have here is aged account receivables. And so you would expect, at the bottom line here, you sold sixty or $600,000 worth of goods in April. You would expect, based upon your experiences, to get approximately $540,000 in cash. Now you can do a statement of cash flows. And you've seen these already, right? Along the way. And you, so they're divided of cash flows from operations, investing, and financing. And it'll look something like this. With that number, I'm sorry, that number being your operating cash inflows. So you've, you've done a pro forma statement of cash flows, and now you can do pro forma income statements and balance sheets. Pro forma income statement. Pro forma balance sheet. Again, just taking numbers that you've already created and adding them to or subtracting them from your starting position on the balance sheet. This is just a summary of the process. 